After much anticipation and more than a month of exciting teasers, the latest version of Cascader is finally here. This is one of the most significant releases to date, packed with incredible new features. The team behind Cascader kindly gave me access to test out the new features and I thought I will share with you the scene files that I used for this video, so you can find that in the description. And now get ready because we have a lot to cover. Let's start with the most significant changes regarding licensing. From now on you have a couple of new options to choose from. The main ones are the free Indian Pro options. In the free tier you can use most of Cascader's features to create animations, but unfortunately you won't be able to export FBX, DAR or USD files anymore. Besides that you are not allowed to use Cascader commercially. But it's not all bad news for free users. If you registered your account before the 1st of March this year, you can get 2 years of indie license for free. The indie license is similar to the previous free tier but without any export limitations. And to claim your license you need to open Cascader version 2024.1, then go to help and claim indie license. The indie license normally costs $99 a year, which is really affordable in my opinion, and the pro version as before offers every available functionality like finger auto posing, scene linking, some of the new features and some more. And it costs $399 a year or $49 a month. And keep in mind that this license after a year will turn into a perpetual license. So when you cancel your subscription, you can use the last release as long as you want. And there is now a 14 day trial option for the pro version, which can help you decide if it's worth for you to upgrade. And shameless plug, if you use my affiliate link in the description with my promo code, you can get 15% off from your subscriptions and I also get something back. With this out of the way, let's talk about the new features and one of the main one is animation on baking, which is also available in the free version by the way. You can use it to make your imported animations like mocap data more editable. For example, I have this animation from Mixamo with keyframes on every key. To make the animation more manageable, you can reduce the number of keyframes and switch the intervals to the best suiting interpolation. Now this can be done with just one button and it does a really great job with the default settings, but if you want your result to be closer to the original one, you can change the settings for this tool, for example by decreasing the interval between two keys. There is already a great tutorial about this feature on the official channel that goes into more details, I recommend checking that out. For me the most exciting new feature is the option to interact with objects with the auto physics tool. Until now if your character was not on the ground, auto physics assumed that your character is jumping or falling in the air. This in some case meant that auto physics wanted to send your characters into orbit. But not anymore, now you can add collision boxes or capsules to meshes, joints or different transform objects. So if a control point is close enough, auto physics will register it as a fulcrum point and this opens up a ton of new possibilities how you can apply physics to your animations. You can use it for example for going over objects, hanging from stuff or move your characters together with the platform, like a car or an elevator or even with rigged objects like a rope in this case. So as you can see, as the character climbs the rope, it detects the fulcrum points, which is marked with the circle. To use this tool, first you will need to import the mesh that you want to make into a collision object, let's say a pull-up bar. I will only need collision with the bar, so I can add a collision capsule to this mesh. I will select the bar in the outliner or in the viewport, and in commands menu add a capsule collision. This will add a new behavior to our objects where you can set the transform and size of this capsule. You can also change what kind of collision you want to have with this object. And now if we jump up to the bar, the fulcrum points are recognized automatically. If not, you might need to tweak the fulcrum settings for these points, but make sure to set the changes for the whole interval where you need it. And now we can do some pull-ups and add secondary motion to it. You can even do some crossfit style pull-ups if you really turn up secondary motion. And since we are here, with the new version we have sliders to make it more convenient to tweak auto physics. 
So we already saw the effects with secondary motion. For another example here, after this speed vault, vertical motion smoothness wants to bring the character too low, which breaks the joints. I can tweak the slider until the result looks good. The next major new function is the retargeting option, which is a game changer in itself. You can just simply select an interval on, of your source animation, copy this animation for retargeting, then select an interval where you want to paste this animation on your second character and paste the retargeted animation. You can even use this to retarget animation for characters in the same scene. In this case, select the center of mass of the first character and copy the animation, then select the center of mass of the second character and you can paste the retargeted animation. It relies on auto-posing, so this is limited for humanoids rigged with the quick rigging tool, so keep that in mind. There are quite a lot of smaller but still significant changes I would like to go over. First, the option to add additional points for auto-posing to use it as pivot points. Automatically you will get a heal additional point, but you can also define points for props or anything else. When you set up the rig in rigging mode, you can choose a point control and click the auto posing props button. Then you will see these points as gray controllers in auto posing mode. You also have additional points for the knees, shoulders, elbows to twist these joints. You can turn these off in the toolbar if you don't need them. Auto interpolation allows you to set up the interpolation automatically as the name suggests. There is now a button that tries to set up the best fitting interpolation mode. In my experience it generally do a quite a good job but you need to tweak them and if you know what you do I would still suggest doing it manually but it's still a great feature. The menu for exporting and importing changed quite a lot. Now when you import or export files you get a dialog window where you can configure how you want to import that file. You can choose between different presets which were previously available as separate buttons in the menus. So keep this in mind when you are watching other tutorials. You you can now open a new window separate from the main software, so you can put one of them to your second monitor. This can be found in the windows menu at the bottom. And also you can now set up quad view. Toggling quad view will split the 3D viewport into four views, three orthographic side views and one user perspective view. With this the shortcut has also changed, so shift space for splitting the view to two views and alt shift space for quad view. You can now mark keyframes with different colors by right clicking on the flag and you can even set your own color for differentiating between the different keys. Also quite a convenient option is that you can now automatically put new objects into new tracks when you add cubes or cameras from the commands menu. This can save you a couple of clicks. There were again some changes to the Python API due to the export-import changes. This means I also had to adopt the Blender bridge add-on. You need to reinstall the add-on in Blender and update the required files in Cascaders commands folder. I had to remove the settings for exporting only selected interval from Cascader. I will add back this feature later with different export-import options, but for now the quickest way to fix this is to remove this option. And unfortunately you are not able to use the add-on to export from Cascader to Blender anymore if you are using the free version, since this function relies on the FBX export. So, this is everything I wanted to cover, but as always, the full list is available on the official website, and let me know what you think any of the changes with this update. I already had a couple of weeks playing with these features, and I think they are truly remarkable and this makes Cascader even more competitive. So I fully understand the changes in the pricing and it's really generous in my opinion that they offer a two years of indie license for free. My only concern is that if I understand correctly you have no way of trying out if Cascader can fit into your pipeline without buying at least an indie license. But on Discord the support is really amazing so they can help you out and hopefully this won't be an issue.